The tools in the sheet metal shop are used for cutting, punching, bending, folding, and spot welding sheet metal. In addition, the two heat treating furnaces are here. The first operation normally performed on sheet metal is to measure it and mark it. The most familiar method for marking a straight line on a piece of sheet metal begins with measuring the required distance with a scale and using a scribe or a pencil to mark the distance. A second point is measured and marked in the same manner. The two points are then connected with a straight line. A much quicker and more accurate method, especially with some practice, is to set a pair of calipers to a specified distance, in this case 2.00 inches, and then to slide the one side along the edge of the metal and let the other side scribe a line at the required distance. The second operation performed on a piece of sheet metal is usually to cut the metal to size. Large straight cuts are best performed on the hydraulic sheet metal shear. The circuit breaker to power the shear is on the opposite wall from the shear. The circuit breaker must be turned on to power the shear. The controls on the shear itself are the power switch, the on switch, the off switch, and the single cycle multiple cycle switch. For the power switch, horizontal is off and vertical is on as indicated by the power indicator light. Once the power is on, the fluid pump for the hydraulic actuator is started by the on switch and turned off by the off switch. For the sanity of others in the room, it is best to leave the fluid pump off except when actually cutting. The single cycle multiple cycle switch controls whether the cutting blade will cycle down and up once or repeatedly when you step on the foot switch. The multiple cycle setting is for production facilities making multiple identical parts and should not normally be used. There are three different methods for setting the length of a cut piece. The suggested method is to scribe a line on the metal as described above and then place the line at the edge of the blade table interface. The second is to set the backstop to the desired distance and bring the piece of metal to be cut into contact with the backstop. To adjust the position of the backstop, loosen the two set screws turn one of the position adjust wheels and then tighten the two set screws. The correct position can be determined from either the scale on the support rods or by inserting a scale to the required depth and adjusting the backstop to just touch the scale. Don't accidentally cut the scale, it has happened. The third is to set the distance using the inscribed scale on the front side of the shear. Once all three power switches are turned on, the shear blade is activated with a foot switch. The foot switch has a safety switch inside it. To activate the cutter, slide your foot all of the way in to release the safety and step down on the foot switch. It is best to leave your foot down until the blade has returned up. It is intentionally difficult to get your finger anywhere near the cutting blade. Please don't try to find a way to do it. Typically, the next step is to punch one or more holes in the sheet metal. The location of the hole is determined by one of the previous marking methods, and then a spring-loaded center punch is used to mark the center of the hole. The center punch is pushed down with some force until the latch releases. A normal center punch, which is tapped with a hammer, can also be used. The hole punch in the shop is a Rotex punch and can punch holes with a variety of different diameters. The hole diameters are visible along the top of the hole punch. Corresponding to each diameter is a letter. The letter is used to select the support which goes with the chosen punch. Begin by pushing the lock lever on the top of the punch forward and holding it there while you rotate the appropriate size punch into the approximate position. Release the lever and rotate the punch until the lock snaps into place. Now push the lock lever on the bottom of the punch down and rotate the support holes until the one with the matching letter is approximately lined up. Release the lever and rotate the support until the lock snaps into place. Place the sheet metal in the hole punch. Lift it against the punch and gently slide the metal around until the dimple from the center punch aligns with a short pin on the face of the hole punch. Lower the punch lever to punch the hole. Cutting small features, especially ones that don't go completely across a piece of sheet metal, is usually done with a pair of metal shears or tin snips. The shears often become loose during use, so be sure to tighten the nut by hand 
or with a wrench before using them. They operate the same way as a pair of scissors. The bandsaw is used for cutting gentle curves into thin sheet steel. If you feel you have a need to use it, ask Mike or a proctor on its proper use. A corner cutter is used when you need a folded corner with sides that don't overlap. Adjust the two guides to the desired height of the sides and tighten. Place the sheet metal in the cutter and pull and release the lever to cut the corner. The principal tool in the shop for bending sheet metal is the bending brake or box brake. The brake is used for making bends such as right angle bends and for making folded edges. The metal is stretched in bending so that dimensions do not come out exactly as expected. We strongly recommend that you measure and scribe a few practice pieces, bend them with the bending brake, and then measure the final dimensions. You can then work backwards from the final dimensions to the dimensions you should cut and scribe on the initial sheet. To make a right angle bend, slide the metal underneath the fingers. If there is already a bend in the piece, you may have to maneuver the piece around the fingers. Line the scribed markings up with the edge of the fingers and use the clamp lever to clamp down the part. A fair amount of force may be required. Next, grab the handle and push or pull it until the face of the brake is slightly past 90 degrees. You should ideally use the handle and not the counterbalance. Then return the face to its original position and release the clamp. To put a folded edge on a piece of sheet metal, slide it under the finger as before, leaving only a very short edge exposed. Then clamp and bend the metal, but move the face as far as it will go. Next, unclamp the piece, turn it around, and place the folded part directly under the finger. Clamp and release the part, and you should have a nicely folded edge. As always, it's wise to practice on scrap first. To put a gentle curve, as opposed to a sharp bend in a piece of sheet metal, use the roller. The adjustment screws on the back of the roller control how tight or loose the final curve will be. It's best to adjust both of them by the same amount. Place the edge of the piece between the top and bottom roller and turn the handle in a clockwise direction. If you need a smaller radius, adjust the screws and repeat the process. The spot welder is for joining two pieces of ferritic sheet metal together. Don't try to spot weld aluminum sheet, you will not be happy with the results. Begin by turning on the power switch on the wall. The easiest and most controllable way to spot weld is to rest the two pieces on the tip at the end of the bottom arm and squeeze the spring loaded handle to bring the tip of the top arm into contact with the top piece. Give the finger switch a brief flick. If you hold the finger switch too long, you will burn the metal and create an unreliable weld. There is also a foot switch on the spot welder. However, it is much more difficult to control. Pushing the foot pedal partway will close the arms to anchor the piece. Pushing the pedal the rest of the way will activate the switch and weld the metal. Despite the rumors, it is safe to spot weld while wearing contact lenses under your safety goggles. However, Arc welding with contacts on can cause permanent eye damage. We do not cover arc welding on this video. If you have a need for arc welding, contact Mike Wheeler or an outside vendor.